Well, hello there, YouTube. Boy, you talking about your dog day afternoon on a Sunday. Abby, Sparky, Danny, Annie, Sasha, she just looks like she's gone. Um, I don't know. I think Leo's on the porch or in the house. Madison's probably somewhere near him. But, um, uh, on the daily vlog, I talked about modifying the forks on the Sportster. On the uh, Iron 883, because over the time I was with you guys, when I put the fork springs in, the shocks, and all that stuff. So here recently, I realized the rear was, the sag was, you know, the springs had softened up, shocks softened up, broke in, whatever you want to call it. So I adjusted the uh, sag in the rear, and I uh, realized that the front had too much sag, and it was riding too low. But I took it for a ride anyway, and uh, the rear was perfect and which made the front very very noticeable so i was gonna do all those adjustments on on the daily vlog but uh, i figured i'd do go through this with you guys and then uh, that'll save me time to take it for a ride on the daily vlog and i'll interchange i'll link below look in the description and i'll link uh to the video of me riding it all right spider i'm gonna move you forward a little bit so we drag the iron out and you guys realize this will throw the headlight aiming a mile off so I'll have to adjust that as well it already threw it off when I adjusted the shocks but I didn't care I was going for a ride I was out of here it was daylight didn't care so anyway we're gonna go with a little higher viscosity oil just one step and I'm going to make a quarter inch increase on the spacers inside here. And I put the oil at uh, about 150 millimeters. As the forks collapse, no springs you measure from the edge of the tube to the oil level in there. Maximum is um, I don't know, 140 millimeters, about 5.5 inches. So I, I run it at about at about um, six inches. So that seems to be a happy oil level. Anyway, see if I can find the PVC pipe first before I dig anything out. We're gonna do that first. So I actually found the actual kit for the iron. This is a stock springs and spacers. But do you see what's missing out of there? I have no PVC pipe. I don't. That's what I was afraid of. I don't know what I done with it. Look at all my, all my notes and stuff from when I worked on it last. I gotta find that pipe. I know it's around here somewhere. So no PVC pipe to be found. So I'm at a point here, about ready to knock the. Uh, I'm just gonna take one out. And see I know that fits in there and I have the stock washers that go between the metal pipe and the spring and uh, I'm gonna see if I can't use a, a pipe cutter and cut these down and use them instead of the PVC I could go to like Home Depot or something like that and get some but you know the social distancing and all God, I know I got that pipe sitting around here somewhere. It drives me nuts. All right, so here's the, the pipe that was in there. And I'm just going to adjust it to three and a quarter. I say to go in quarter inch increments. So I think I'm just going to cut this, the OEM metal pipe here. Oh. What is this? Wonder how long these are. No way could it be. <laughs> no. Yeah, I've already made some adjustments here, haven't I? I'll be a son of a gun. Almost had her. I guess I could. But that would be with all the weight on that thing. But if I could put washers in between them, I could, nah, quarter inch on a little piece of 
PVC, that thing's liable to snap or something. All right, let me go find my uh, pipe cutter, wherever that's at. Let's see if we can hack these uh, stock steel tubes. I need to take into account the washer, though, because that's going to go between the... Okay, so they have... They put a washer in there. All right. So the kit came with a washer to help protect the PVC pipe. Hmm. So we'll, we'll be okay with that measurement. But that washer, see the size of this one, that fits that, that metal pipe really well. I think this metal pipe might even, yep. So the one it came with, and the kit's not gonna work. Yeah, so that'll work. Look at that washer, it looks like it's been beat down. But yeah, that'll, this'll work against the spring. This is the way it came stock. So that's wider than the OD of that pipe. How much play is there inside the fork? Oh man, almost none. Oh, oh, it shanks down to get thicker. This will work. Cool. Now I just need to be able to cut that thing at three and a quarter. Best money I ever spent on a tool. Is that stupid grinder? So I added a quarter of an inch. So I couldn't find my pipe cutter. Said so to use. <laughs> Had to use a Dremel cutting wheel. Oh, I gotta get the dust out of there too. A Dremel cutting wheel, and then just made a rough cut, come through here, and just ground her down nice and smooth. That thing is awesome. She's crude and she's cheap, but she gets the job done. There's my three and a quarter. Oh, and there's my. My three. Perfect. I'll show you guys or tell you guys a little fun fact thing here. So I wrote the sizes on those pipes. So years down the road, if I ever pull it out without looking at it, I can see what it is. But using a Sharpie and writing on, on stuff, like uh, when I take a motor part, like of my own, and I don't, I'm not going to put it right back together, I'll mark like pistons and stuff like that. Just in case, you just never know what could happen. So I'll write on the skirt. I'll say one, two, three, and four, or whatever the case may be. And years down the road, you pull that motor back apart, and it's like you wrote it on there yesterday. Ten years from now, if I pull that pipe out of there, that writing will be on there just like you see it. It's not like these things are going to be spinning around, riding against the ID of the fork tube. Pretty crazy. Another little little tricky thing here. So I made this a slightly over three and a quarter inches. Take a Sharpie, put a zip tie on it if you don't have any other means. Put a zip tie on there, the zip tie makes it square. So I just take a Sharpie, walk around there, make my rough cut, then go over to grinder and grinder and fi finalize it. I tell you what, never underestimate changing your fork oil. So this is about seven years old. To give you an idea, what do I got up here I could show you? Um, this will work. This is not ATF. Let's give you an idea. That's what um, Type E Harley Davidson fork oil, that's about the color of it. Looks like ATF. That's not what that looks like. But the nice thing is, it doesn't have any any signs of moisture in it. I know the guys don't like the boot gaiters on there, or the fork gaiters. But man, are those things fork and seal savers. If you ever find water in your oil, in your fork oil, I mean, granted, water can get in there and you don't see it leaking you still should replace your fork seals because the water eats the seals you just change the uh, fluid in there 
you're going to be putting seals in it before too long. And if the seals are compromised, that's what allowed the water to get in. <laughs> All right, so the fluids are drained. Don't worry about the spring sitting there. I, uh, I clean them off before putting them in. But um, stock capacity is 401 cc's. You'll see I have it set at 300 right now. Uh, two things, the winding of the stock springs is much wider so they don't use up as much volume of oil when they're in the fork. So Progressive is specific about a maximum oil height of five and a half inches or 140 uh, millimeters. And what do I do with it? Oh, it's like I was saying earlier, I set them at 155. That seems to work best for me that on these things and it's a uh, well well below minimum or way above minimum it's just a skosh I mean you're just talking a small amount roughly about six inches I'm running about a half an inch lower um, oil level so what I'll do is while the forks are fully extended and this gives me another chance to make sure that any binding in the forks I got that rectified as well while I'm messing with this thing. But I'll put 300 cc's in each tube. Cycle the oil because the wheel's loose. So I'll cycle the wheel, get any air out of the uh, um, damping rods and whatnot. Just make sure she's not purging any air. Then I'll collapse the front end because the forks have to be completely collapsed with no springs. And that's when you measure the height of the oil. In the tube all right so that's completely topped out the forks are or they're completely bottomed out and it's it's just shy of uh, <laughs> making her loose on the jack so with everything compressed no springs in the in the forks now I measure the oil level and what's nice about this is you set it down in the tube and you just suck out any excess. This rides down in there. It's the coolest thing ever. So where I set that, you can see I was about 25, almost 25 cc's, but I might as well say 25 cc's too much. I put 50 additional in each fork. So I'll put 20 cc's in the, in the next fork and just suck that out. So she set at exactly 155 millimeters in oil level height. And the other reason I, I, I mentioned the uh, um, that the oil level is less than what it is stock was what I was saying earlier. The coils are much more tightly wound. And I put the the tightest one because they're progressive springs, not by name, but the spring itself is progressive. This is the soft, you know, the little bumps in the road. This is the bigger stuff. So to reduce unsprung weight in the forks, I put the the less tightly wound down. Some people think that when you put the tightly wound towards the top, they can make more noise. I could care. I could care less. I've never heard a fork make enough noise that I was even bothered by it. So I put the, because this is going to be the heavier side of the spring. Because there's more coils. And that displaces more oil. But these springs displace considerably more oil than those springs. That's why you end up with less volume of oil. The height of oil in the fork is pretty much stock. But... You gotta remember you're putting tighter wound springs in there now instead of these are thinner and looser wound. So when everything's together, the ride height in these forks will be about what stock would be. But to achieve that, you're putting slightly less oil. So I'm two millimeters shy of meeting my goal. So my sag is two millimeters too low. Dude, I am not going to mess with that. That's close enough. But look at it just sitting here under its own weight. Before, under its own weight, it was 
ever so slightly collapsing the forks. I'm super happy with that. So now I need to line up my headlight because I can guarantee you that thing's 100 miles off now. So we'll see where that's at. And uh, that'll, <laughs> that'll be it. I need to get the fairing back on. Heck yeah, man. Man, what a project. It, it's, it's a simple job. It's just, it takes time to get it done. Then to get all my fingerprints off of everything. You know, it's always fun to get those fork caps back on. But you add a quarter inch of additional preload on there, it becomes a whole nother fun thing. <laughs> I had to stand on a stool and lean over the bike and press with all my the, you know you can get it down and get it to touch but you gotta have it touch even so you can get the thread started without messing anything up boy you do not want to mess them threads up but that's that i've done the forks i need to just double check the headlight here and see where that's at and like i say that'll be that for that all this will probably last another six or seven years <laughs> until next time all right there she is She's all done. Headlight is aimed correctly. Which, by the way, those dangling headlights are the biggest pain in the butt. Man, you tighten it, it throws itself off. You loosen it, put it back, throws itself off. But I got her dialed. She's setting perfect for, uh, for the suspension as it's set. That's really going to be nice when I rode it after adjusting the sag in the rear the front just was noticeably setting too low and when they're sitting too low it uses up what available suspension is there very quickly which ain't a whole lot <laughs> i mean really short throw up front but that's the look harley was after i guess they achieved it they sold about nine trillion of these things anyway there's my little projects for the iron. There probably won't be no more projects for the year, I would imagine. But who knows? It's still early. Sure love that old gal. So I guess the only thing left to do now is to take it for a ride. And I will, uh, I will do that on the daily vlogs side. Like I said at the very beginning. What a project. Like I say, it's very simple. It's just time consuming. You know, I got two days off during the week. I want to spend it riding or goofing off. I got lawn I need to mow. You know, it's already the first part of the year. Time for all that stuff. So, yeah, I'll, like I said at the beginning, I'm going to split these things up. I'll do, I'll leave all the stuff I just did on this channel and uh, do the ride on the daily vlog. So, um, I, like I said, I, I'll put a, um, a link to that video to the ride video so you guys can see what I think when I ride it all right let's do it let's take her for a ride so that will be on that other channel so thank you guys for hanging out while I was goofing around with this for good lord two and a half hours all right